My makeup story starts when I am nine years old and I get my first pimple. As far as I know, nobody else in school or anyone else my age had zits and here I was with my first pimple. I remember getting called a couple of different insults. When I was 10, I was called dot to dot by some kids in the playground. I thought that was pretty clever. Another really clever one I got called was Acne Acres. And for those who know Looney Tunes, it was a little play on the word Acme Acres University. So again, kind of funny. But that was by a boy I was meant to be going around with at the time. Um, so it hurt a little bit as well. So by the time I was 12, I was wearing foundation to school every day. And my bad skin, as I called it then, was quite a big consuming part of my world. Um, every night when I would say my prayers, it was at the top of the list. Heal my skin, please God, because it was just such an embarrassment and I was using makeup and it was just, I felt too young to be struggling with things like that at such a young age. I also had a feeling that maybe my bad skin would be used for something good in the future. I really hoped that these ugly red scabs and spots and blemishes would actually be some source of victory or I would have a good story to tell at the end of it when I could look back and laugh at those years. When I was 18, finally, my bad skin left my face and it really wasn't um, an issue on my face anymore, just um, from my jaw and my neck down. So I was so relieved when I was 18. But ever since then, of course, I've still struggled with acne and now I'm in my mid-30s. And it's still an issue, but not to the extent, of course, um, as it was when I was younger. So I use makeup and I started using makeup just to cover what I hated, cover those embarrassing things on my face that people were calling me out for. It wasn't really that I was really vain, um, wanting to look like a supermodel or inspired by anyone in the movies. It was just, I was embarrassed and I wanted to use it as a camouflage and to cover things I didn't like. My makeup story continued when I was recruited into a direct sales party plan type business. And I started selling one brand of makeup. But I realized really quickly that with my honesty and my kind of sense of um, candor, I wanted to be able to say whatever I wanted to say and recommend any brand I felt that the person um, could be using as a solution for them. I didn't want to be stuck selling and recommending just one brand when it might not be the answer for everyone. So in 2008, I launched my business and called it A Beautiful Education. And I was focusing on makeup lessons and still to this day, that's what I do. I give women a beautiful education and I try and help them to become their own beauty experts and their own makeup artists. Instead of offering free parties in people's homes and a bid to try and sell a certain brand, I went back to the old way of business, which is charging for a service and then letting my customer buy the products they wanted wherever they wanted to buy them. That liberated me from trying to sell a certain product and putting the pressure on me to just sell um, something that will make me money. And it took away the pressure from the customer to purchase because I don't believe that you should be risking your beautiful, your precious appearance as a woman on commercially motivated advice and recommendations. Most of the women I serve today with makeup lessons are in their mid-30s or 40s, they're busy professional women, um, right up to women who are in their 60s and maybe they're semi-retiring um, but really wanting to look special and feel so much better than how they're feeling right now. When I began offering makeup lessons, it was because I saw a need in the market. I saw that when I looked around at the different salons and makeup stores and ways that you can purchase product, I didn't see any way for women to get unbiased advice. So that's my makeup story.